Hi, I'm Dave. Uh, we're here with uh, Cross Current TV. Right now we're here at uh, Alaska's Real Life Taxidermy. Mark and Susie Oslin are the uh, two people here that do amazing fish mounts. Okay, so we're here to uh, try to figure out what information they need so they can make a, a great fish replication for your fish of a lifetime. Hi, I'm Susie Oslin and you're at Alaska's Real Life Taxidermy Studio. Uh, my husband Mark, which is the artist of this operation, he's down in Canada right now with his two girl dogs bird hunting. So unfortunately you don't get to meet Mark, you're just going to have me talk to you today. We started in taxidermy back in about 1983. As a little girl I never dreamed of growing up and being a taxidermist. But this was something that Mark was really truly interested in. It's hard work, but it's really rewarding. The artistic fulfillment and working with a guy like Mark, he is so talented. There's a handful, maybe about five guys that on any given day can go to a, a national competition and can win and Mark's one of those guys. Taxidermy is a passion for him. It's not just a job, it's something that you know, he truly loves, it, it's, he's excited each and every day. When we try to put a piece together for our customer, we're trying to recreate a fish to the point where you can't tell that it's not alive. We're going to create a reproduction out of fiberglass and resin. Um, most studios have to order it through a manufacturing company. We have our own line of reproductions, doesn't matter whether it's a king salmon, a rainbow, a steelhead or whatever. Mark has literally over the years cast and molded hundreds of fish. You then go to that, um, that mold inventory and pull out the reproduction, the size and the girth length, and that's then laid up. Um, at that point, once it's laid up, you pop it out of the mold and you'll come out with this um, white blank. What I've got for you right here is one of our king reproductions in its really rough state. It has uh, the seams that still need to be ground down. It is the actual full body of a king salmon. Then you have to, as the process continues, add a head onto that. That will be heated up and will be fitted onto this fish body and molding that head right to the body so that it actually looks like one piece. And at this point, you can kind of see these little knobby areas on this reproduction. That is where the fins are gonna go. These fins are, are going to be then you know, ground down and positioned in, in the various areas on the fish. Will be heated up and because they're made with flex resin, they're able to be bent. So you can put the fish in extremely natural looking fishing poses. You can see right here, there's a spot for the eye. Eye socket will be ground out and then those eyes will be positioned into that head again. Once again, fitting them in there and positioning them so that they have the right depth and the right uh, angle so that it looks like a natural fish eye. And if the eye that we're using for the particular fish mount is not available, then Mark will custom paint the eyes himself. Then this is kind of one that, that's finished off now and is ready to be painted. You can see right down into the mouth of that fish there's full mouth detail. So an entire tongue and, and throat latch. Over here we have another fish that's a little further along in the process. Um, we've got a, a base coat color on here and we've started scale tipping it. See where you've got a patch here where it, it's uh, more grayed and then here where the individual scales have been painted in. On most all of our reproductions they will require each and every individual scale to be hand tipped um, and, and sometimes again in, in not only one color but two and three colors, that's my job. Yeah, I'm the one that goes through and, and hand tips all these scales. About the last step when it comes to working with a fish mount is, is the painting. That's where Mark's artistry really shows through. You have to start laying on your, your base coat washes to give you a little bit of depth. Then you, you lay on, um, say you're like translucent colors, your candy colors, so that you make sure that, that you're building up the, the right bases. So when you finally finish off the, the top colors of, of the fish, everything is gonna blend and match and, and come up to be as customized and as close to the photograph that the customer is provided with as, as is humanly possible. So after the fish are painted, the very last thing that you do to them is you put on a, a real high quality gloss coat. When you shoot that on, it appears that the fish just came out of the water. 
Okay, so when we have a customer that, that brings us a, a fish that they want to have done, we need a length measurement on that fish, not necessarily a girth measurement, because we can look at the photo and pretty much tell what size fish it is. And you don't really want to take a girth measurement on a lot of these fish because you don't want to stress them out. I mean, the whole point of having a reproduction and doing the catch and release fishing is that you want those fish to live when you let them go. So the two actual things that we need are the length measurement and then good photos. Now, when we're talking about photographs, I don't mean a picture of the guy standing there holding this fish with a beautiful background and lots of trees and the river. That's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is a close-up of just the fish in the picture. And once again, keeping in mind not stressing the fish. So keep it down close to the water, maybe even in the water. That's okay. We're looking for color. We're looking for close-ups because every single fish that you catch, doesn't matter what watershed it comes out of, they're all unique. Do a shot of the head, do a shot of the body, do a shot of the tail, you know, and then maybe do an overall shot and then let that fish go. The more information you give your taxidermist, the more customized the artwork is that he can give back to you. When we go back in and put that painting detail back into, a, say, a fish reproduction, we really are using the photographs that the customer gives us as reference, meaning that, say, in, for instance, a, a rainbow or a king salmon where they've got a distinct spot pattern, we will actually try to go back in and copy that spot pattern as best we can tell from the photographs that the customer um, gives to us. I've had customers, um, you know, that I've seen years later that have said, yeah, you know, I took that photograph I sent you and I held it right up to the fish that you sent back to me and the spots even matched. This is artwork. These fish are absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you start studying fish, there you can find three and four colors just in a single scale. I hope this information that we've passed on to you, you, you find useful and will help you out along the way. You know, when you find that trophy of a lifetime and, and you end up wanting to, to have that hanging on the wall and, and having that memory for, for many years to come. What we're trying to recreate for you is wildlife art. Uh, these fish are, are beautiful specimens and if we can do them justice and make our customers happy, that's what it's all about. And thanks again for watching. I know I learned a lot today about uh, what all goes into uh, making a uh, fish of a lifetime last forever. I'm Dave with Cross Current TV. At Cross Current TV, we want to hear from you. We'll take your questions and ideas posted to our Facebook or YouTube pages and use them for future episodes. And click here to check out the trailer for our first fly fishing adventure movie, Cast Alaska, available now on DVD. And to give to them to figure out how to get the best uh, production fish quality, whatever, forgot. <laughs> I'm just rambling. <laughs> I just <laughs> and, and hopefully, maybe sometimes we'll make a whatever of it. Exactly. Yeah. God, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I was doing so good right up to that point, man.